Hey guys, welcome to another Medieval Battle with Midnight Games Online. Today we have a scenario battle for you. It is England versus France, an instant classic in a massive 4 on 4 battle. As an added bonus, this is a 5 star battle, so it has the highest score that a replay can achieve. In this scenario battle, the French are trying to cross this frozen river that we see over here. And the English will try to hold it against them. Now, if the French can cross, they will be able to attack London. So that will be phase two of the scenario, which will be a new battle, uh, the Siege of London. However, if the English can hold, they will be able to counter strike deep into French territory before the French can really rally and they will get to siege the city of Paris. So this crucial battle will determine where the next battle is fought. So without further ado, guys, let's get into the army compositions here. On the defender side, we have England defending. And we can start with my army here. It's going to be tough to separate some of the players since they are the same faction. So this is my general. This is English, a, a, a group of English foot knights. And this is the captain here leading that foot knight, uh, that group of foot knights and the general of my army is this knight right in the front here. And as you can see guys, we, we are playing a high era battle. So no late units are allowed. Um, second unit of foot knights over here crouching kind of and these are all hidden from view in this little forest here and um, a third unit here of the English foot knights now we were allowed three shock infantry plus the general can be whatever he is so because my general was a shock infantry foot knight unit uh, I did bring a basically four units of shock because the general was one of them so the three that were allowed plus the general so this is the fourth unit of English foot knights and these are very very nice looking units here guys for the high era now back here hidden in the forest besides those two units of foot knights with the general making it three we have two units of um, shot cavalry so these are English uh, knights the mounted knights wearing 13th century armor and this is a group of English mounted knights wearing 14th century armor and they do have an extra experience point add an extra chevron speaking of which this unit of foot knights and the general with uh, multiple experience points added they, they don't make a huge difference in the game but they do make just a little bit of an edge for some of the units uh, my pole arms here the heavy bowmen uh, wearing 14th century armor and spearmen here these are the heavy spear infantry for England wearing 14th century armor those are going to be tough to get through and this sort of elite elite group of units here um, hidden in the forest a little further away from the action now here is the actual river crossing one of the two and here is the second so for my army here we're going to continue with um, the army uh, of England controlled by Knight yours truly uh, we have in the front row here right by the riverside some spearmen these are spearmen wearing 13th century armor for england two units of those and then behind them we do have some missiles so we have early era longbowmen so the archers wearing just 13th century armor very very light armor here another unit over here for the longbows and a third unit of english longbows over here and then we do have two more units of missiles here. These are retinue longbowmen from the high era. And so is this unit over here. So two units of longbows wearing 14th century um, armor. And then in the back here, two more units of the early era spearmen, much smaller shields and their 13th century armor being a little lighter. Than those from the 14th century the artillery here and yes we did bring artillery to the river crossing 
uh, trebuchet for uh, my army here. And holding this river with me, we have um, one of the English allies, which is Wales. So we do have three players playing as England and one player playing as a close ally of England, which is Wales. On the other side, we have three players playing as France and one of their close allies, the Duchy of Lorraine. So the Welsh army here commanded by Zethro. And he has a YouTube channel coming up as well, Zethro Games. So check that out. This is the Welsh general. And he's wearing 13th century armor, so he's keeping it light, being very mobile here. And he does have some spearmen here. Now these are 14th century Welsh spears. They are medium spear infantry, not quite as heavy as the as the 14th century English spears that we saw hiding in the forest there. But they're still going to be tough to get off the field if they can form up in a good uh, spear wall formation. And in the very front row here, almost in the river, we have two units of medium melee infantry. These are also wearing 13th century armor. And I really like these Welsh units. Small round shield, straight sword, scale mail. Just a really cool looking um, group of units here, guys. So th those are the front lines for the Welsh. And his artillery is a 14th century artillery, so one of the more advanced artillery pieces here. That is a regular bombard. That's on the field. He does bring... Well, no, I think these longbows are actually English longbows, probably from one of the allies on that side of the field. So we're looking for more of the Welsh units. Here he does have more of these. Uh, these are actually dismounted Templar knights, and they are wearing 13th century armor. So there'll be some of the lighter arm knight units on the field, but they're still knights, still elite skill level, and very tough to get off the field. Second unit here of dismounted Templars, third unit here. And basically a similar type of unit, the Dismounted Hospitaller Knights, also wearing the early era or 13th century armor here. Second unit of those and a third unit. So you have six units of these, which in this high era battle are not elite, but they are by no means uh, easy to get off the field. He does have two units of billmen, and those are 14th century units. Those will be tough to get off the field. And here are the Welsh Missiles. These are light bow infantry, I think you pronounce it the safe wear. And uh, some of them don't even have shoes, looks like, so they're very, very light. <laughs> and uh, yeah, gonna have, gonna have trouble maybe in the uh, frozen snows here. On the side, we do have, these are probably again our allies with some English knights, definitely not Wales bringing those. And they are, they are not mine either. So the Welsh general, up here pretty close to the action for now and the our two allies here both also commanding the kingdom of england we have fenrir and we have gluten-free water those are the names of the players and it'll be tough to separate their army so I'll just kind of do them as a unit um, we do have english knights here wearing 14th century armor being controlled by one of them we have two units of longbows from england the um wearing the very light 13th century armor for bowmen over here we have an english unit of heavy bowmen over here and then looks like we have a general over here and this is the third general on the field so we now have an english foot knight um captain as one general the welsh leader and then we have edward the black prince so he's the third general over here and he is in the back here. He has one unit of 14th century armored English knights and a unit of Hobbelar skirmish cab with him here. And they're already trying to move here at the beginning of this battle over to where the rest of them are. And this is the fourth general on the English side. And finally, here he is, the King of England. And he is with his 14th century armored King's Guard. So very elite unit, some extra experience points added. We have more English foot knights here, which will be crucial to hold this river. Uh, another unit over here. And some retinue longbowmen. One, two, 
units of retinue longbowmen three and four, and then a regular longbow unit with, with 13th century armor at the back. Now up here again, because there's two English players over here, more English foot knights. Again, your max allowed three of these uh, 14th century foot knight units, three of the shock infantry per team, unless your general, of course, is a shock infantry. In the front, there is a heavy spear unit. So he does have some 14th century spears with experience points in the front. And looks like English foot knights wearing 13th century armor. So the lighter variants over here, maybe some hedge knights or whatnot. Knights that just did not have the best armor available. So four units here and they look to be on the move. So it looks like he may be throwing those in front of this 14th century spear unit. Behind that, we have more spearmen. These are very cheap units here. Spearmen uh, of England with 13th century armor. Another unit there, third unit here. We do have two units of heavy billmen in the back. Another trebuchet here. And then we have our fourth artillery unit here, which is also a trebuchet. These are regular longbowmen of the early era. And here we see those those units here. You do have some some armor, but not much. And that is it for the defenders, which is the English. Let's move over to the attackers. These are the French. And again, there are three players playing as the Kingdom of France and a fourth player as a French ally, which is the Duchy of Lorraine, which was sometimes um, sort of under the control of the French crown and sometimes a lot of the time part of the Holy Roman Empire. So let's find the Duchy of Lorraine and the player controlling them is Knox, N-O-X. So this is his general, this is a foot, uh, foot uh, guard, the Duke's foot guard. So these are the knights of the Duke's foot guard, just a whole variety of weapons here. This guy with um, pole axe, this guy with just a completely different weapon, and then the captain here with a, what looks to be a war hammer and no shield. And I think we have a guy with a longsword here, if I'm not mistaken. So just an absolutely, completely different array of weapons. So that's the Duke's foot guard here. He's got a bunch of experience points put on that. Let's see if we can see the rest of Lorraine's army. He is right on the mouth of this river here. These are the men-at-arms, which are the shock infantry for Lorraine. And... He does have an, a second and a third unit there to maximize his three units of shock. He has some early era or 13th century armored foot knights of Lorraine. Clumped here into these into the trees as well. Another unit back here, that's a third unit of those. So um, let's look for more of his units here. These are 14th century foot knights. He's got two units of those. They are just melee units, a bit weaker than the men-at-arms. And Moselle Merchant Marines. Very cool heart-shaped shields here. Very, very interesting looking units here, very unique. And they're wearing high era armor, the 14th century armor. And this looks like a mistake. He does pick a late era unit here. They're only a medium melee infantry unit, so not a huge difference maker, but certainly not allowed in this battle. The Sergeant Swordsman. And just more Lorraine units. He has some archers wearing 13th century armor, so very little armor here. The Brabanson and archers. Second unit there. And then he has a unit of levy archers, slightly better high era archer unit. In the front here, he does have some very cheap troops. Brabanton wearing the early era armor. Second unit here. And then he does bring the Knights of Lorraine. And there is their captain here with the steel mace. 
and the colors of the rain on his shield and tunic. So that is a 14th century Shaw Cavalry unit. And I think that might be it for Lorraine. No, he has a second unit of knights here. And then those early era lightly armored foot knights. That might be it for Lorraine. All right, now we'll get into the French factions here. The So Knox was controlling Dutch Lorraine. The French are controlled by the Karaya Wolfie is one of the players. Strongwind is another. And then Sylvie and Jaro uh, Sylvian Yarrow being um, also one of the three French players, a very good player that I played with before. Um, these are the French crossbows here, 14th century armored crossbows, two units, and some archers. And these are the early French archers, very lightly armored. In the back, there is a bombard. So that is going to be key in this battle, and that's probably why a lot of us are keeping our units sort of back. All right. And then here we have the dismounted French knights. They're wearing 13th century armor. Really like some of the interesting weapons here. You can see this kind of widened blade at its tip. And we have crossbow cavalry, two units, earlier armor. Some sergeants, heavy melee infantry for France. We have one of the generals. More foot knights. We have a unit of pole arm infantry, 14th century for the French, and they are kind of crouching here in the, in the forest, not visible to the enemy. We have light pike in infantry, but they're also wearing 14th century armor, although it's very light 14th century armor. And then we have early spears for the French. And here we have the dismounted French foot knights, the Chevalier. Just beautiful, beautiful unit with the colors of the French, the Kingdom of France. So three units here for one of the players with lots of experience points added. With the attackers, the French, having more money and um, thus able to bring more experience points to the battle. So another general here, and in the front we do have some early era archers. The French archers wearing 13th century armor. And the second row here, Pavi spears. So these are the 14th century armored spears of France. Very cool looking unit, kind of ankle deep in the snow there. Second unit here also wearing the 14th century armor. Behind them, more 14th century spears, just veteran units with extra experience points. Here we have the dismounted French foot knights wearing the lighter 13th century armor. Second unit of those, third, fourth, fifth, six unit here in this group and we have some crossbowmen here with the 13th century armor the early crossbows of france and the back here we have another player's dismounted french foot knights one two three and finally sort of right in the back we have a medium shot cavalry at the sergeants of france with high era armor, although it is not the heaviest armor. Some lighter spear units wearing 13th century armor. One, two, three of them, the Brabenzinen. Oh, four, five, and six, actually. Another unit of the 13th century crossbows. More Brabenzinen, but these are medium melee infantry, so they have, looks like, swords, some of them, and uh, one-handed axes uh, with a shield. So that's four units of these here, sort of cheaper units. Then these are the more expensive units wearing 14th century armor, the sergeants of the high era. One, two, three, four, and they all do bring a lot of experience points. And another fifth one back here. 
Uh, well, it's actually different units. So these are medium melee infantry. This is a heavy melee infantry unit. They're sar sergeant d'arms. And back here we have medium shot cavalry, the Cleans. Cool looking unit. We have the Wa de France, the King of France in the back here commanding with a war hammer, gorgeous shield and a crown on his head, and his King's Guard. And then another unit of Cleans here with him. So lots of varied cav here on the field for France. Lorraine bringing some knights. I'm not sure if the French did. They just brought various other cav to the field. Obviously the knights being in, in the King's Guard as well. All right, guys, I think that's it for the army compositions. So let's get this battle underway here. As the English tried to hold this river against the French. We have this unit here, the Edward the, the Black Prince moving help? across back to where the rest of his army is with his cavalry. For now we do have the Bombard here trying to target something on the opposite side, perhaps hitting these troops here, the spears. France here moving up the, or rather, excuse me, this is Wales with Zethro moving up the infantry here, and there's the cannon shots. Where are they gonna go? Back here. And he does get a few hits here on this archer unit. And the Welsh have taken the mouth of this river, and they're going to hold it. And behind them, we do have some English spearmen moving in. Over here, it looks like the two sides are coming at each other a little harder here. The English spears perhaps pushing too far, now being called back. With Lorraine setting up here to match them. And firing across the gap here are the French. Or trebuchet fire already zooming in overhead here and it looks like we may have a cav charge by the French crashing into the Welsh here big charge by the sergeants killing 13 of the Welsh men pulling out now though losing only one and these archers here I was it looks like a little late with the longbowmen wasn't expecting that. 15 of the Welsh have died. And over here we now have the Dutch here Lorraine pushing. And let's enjoy the cinematic view guys as they take on some spearmen from England. The infantry of Lorraine just wasting no time. You see arrows cutting overhead from the English bows the first bodies hitting the ground here on this side of the river. So a tremendous amount of damage here already. This unit 77 and 76 men out of 120. The units of Lorraine taking a bit of damage as well. And this trebuchet is, looks like it's lost one of its or trebuchets, and that must be from this bombard here of France firing over. I'm not sure if that's Sylvian Jaro, Sylvian Jaro, or one of the other guys, but it's taken out another trebuchet. So the artillery of England losing out early. And again, it's tough to tell if this is Strongwind, Sylvian Jaro, or uh, the third player, which was the Kariah Wolfie, but one of them is doing this. While Knox, the Dutch of Lorraine, is sending in his, his men here. And we have more, uh, this looks like, and not Lorraine, but France, sending in some of their first units into this breach here. And over here, this unit now, 
looks like the the archers now take the enemy have rallied their unit the cavalry unit here another charge was done killed another 19 men but we do have enough archers here covering this river crossing that that is just not going to work sending in an isolated cavalry unit so it did take its toll here 31 men dead over here and looks like 19 dead and some of these french units now the archers able to score kills as well and they're sending shafts into this through this river crossing and into these welsh troops and the english respond Just a volley of arrows already, throwing up water here, taking out some dismounted French knights. Now they got their shields up and they're going to charge. It's just a mass of arrows that's flying in both directions here. The Welsh actually be close to annihilated. And both sides charge. Welsh infantry up against the um, French knights with 13th century armor. They're just gonna have too much skill here. The Welsh infantry. Oh, and look at that De decapitation by that French knight. And now trebuchet fire crashing here down in the middle of these French knights, also taking out some Welsh. That was, that looks to be my trebuchet here of England. So a, a good hit, but with some friendly fire. And now we have some English spears trying to hold against French knights as the bows get more cover. Big battle guys breaking out everywhere here across this river. And more spears being pushed up. Just in preparation of these spears not, not faring too well. And already being thrown in to hold the England, the uh, French push at bay. And this trebuchet firing again, kind of risky into a lot of these. But pretty good hits here. We're on the English side of the line here and here as well. My men have given and up these and English units are lives. running. They are breaking. So a big hit by the trebuchet. 56 kills now after a couple of volleys. Over here, the English line breaking, but some foot knights being thrown in to hold the line. And they will take on this mounted friendship with Chevaliers. This amount of French knights. And that unit already depleted, and more trebuchet fire here from England. This unit with 72 kills already and low on ammunition. This unit, on the other hand, there's only one unit left, one trebuchet left of four. That's got to be due to this bombard here, and there it is firing again. And the cannonballs just landing in the snow right next to the trebuchet. So that is definitely what he's targeting for, and he looks like he's killing other units that are clumped around it as well. So this unit being, this whole side actually being more of a, a missile of war. The levy archers here of Lorraine, not doing as well as the English longbows. And a lot of them just, being picked off, and there we go another couple. Wow, they are going down. They're sending, they're sending shafts over. They're getting shots in, but but already wavering that unit. So the English winning the missile war, 
their longbows. And this single trebuchet gets a shot off. But a miss to the water. A shallow little patch of water with the river crossing the deck. Enemy units have rallied and returned to the battle. And here now we have the English spears charging at a unit of French knights wearing 13th century early armor. The men are running, cowards! And those spears really are not going to last. But we do have the Welsh spears with 14th century armor being pushed to the front here. He's may do a little better, and he does put them into possibly in the shield wall. But the England, the French knights now just faces so much. Um, arrow fire that they are going to have their shields up to go into the shield wall of their own. And they're just forming up right now. I don't know about this strategy, guys. Put, it, put yourself in the shield wall and just hope you absorb the arrows. So they do charge. Now that they're hand-to-hand, -hand, they're actually hard to hit. As the English don't want to hit the back of those Welsh units. The Welsh spears here, guys. Trying to hold against French knights. They do have slightly better armor on the Welsh side than these French knights with the earlier armor. And English spears with 13th century armor and the early armor being thrown into the back as well. Just to make sure the French don't break through. So this side now with multiple units trying to hold these. French knights back. Over here we have a French knight unit breaking. We have some trebuchet fire just missing off to the side. And we do have a brawl in the river here. English spears and early era knights taking on the French spears, the Moselle Merchant Marines of Lorraine. So we see the flag of Lorraine in the middle of this river. And just a bunch of arrow fire still from all sides, guys. This river crossing is a brutal one. Lots of blood here, and lots of bodies clogging up this river. And that was maybe another big trebuchet shot. I'm not sure from which side. One shot seemed to be more on the uh, French side and one on the English. And the foot knights of Lorraine, the, wearing the early era armor, the 13th century armor, have charged and tried to flank these units, and they may have lowered their morale with that. So English spears thrown in to hold them briefly. And this foot, foot knight unit needs to charge. It cannot be backing up right now. And it, it does charge. It does charge. A little late, but better late than never, and they do hit those Brazil merchant points pretty hard. Oh, gotta love the snow falling and these fiery trebuchet shots arcing and overhead. But the French have pushed and they've sort of opened up a little gap here in the English defense here. But a big trebuchet shot takes a chunk out to admit defeat. of that French the unit. unit. Those were actually the, the men of Lorraine. Some French spears there as well and possibly saving this side for, France, for the English. That trebuchet fire and more trebuchet shots missing that time. And now we have one of our first elite units, the first unit of English foot knights being pushed up of the 14th century. They are the shock infantry. And they have now completely plugged this side of the gap here, taking on some lighter armor. 
Fort Knights from Lorraine. It's a joint cinematic view, guys. As the French, or the English Fort Knights from on the right here, and there's their captain right here, and he gets hit in the face, but comes back hard. And uh, these English Fort Knights, very, very elite, with very good armor and just top-notch skills. Try and stop this flood from France and Lorraine. And just the arrows from the French side flying it over the here. A unit is running from the enemy! And the brawl this part of the river continues, and just friendly fire here, taking out his own English knight. That's the risk to run. When you cut your trebuchet shots too close, you can never aim perfectly. Over here, we do have more Welsh spears here. We have the, the initial units are broken now. And the French knights here dismounting, uh, dismounted French knights rather, holding the river. We do have some French archers being thrown in. These archers have 124 kills, 25 now and are just being thrown in because they're out of ammo. They do have some single-handed weapons, axes and cleavers. They're being thrown in against this Welsh spear unit. Some Welsh spears breaking here in the back. So two Welsh spear units holding this river crossing. which is the, the north side of the river. That one, that one is the south here. Holding this north side of the river against the English. A unit has fired all of its ammunition. And the cinematic view guys, we're gonna see that as the archers get taken apart, but actually archers being thrown in now as well. My unit of English archers, oh, that was a lovely thrust of the neck. And we have some archers taking on a mix of spears and archers on this side here. The English longbow is only with 72, 73 kills here, pushing in and also being used in hand to hand now. And we still have some units that have missiles, have a few arrows left, firing away, taking out this crossbow unit here, which is wavering now, down to 39 men, still with about maybe 30% of ammunition left. These longbows with 64 kills. And uh, one of the other English players here with his longbows now starting to move up and starting to fire away as part of the reserves here. This bombard has 84 kills. It's done quite well on this side. I don't know if I see any enemy artillery, whether it was taken out or probably never brought in the first place. But these three units of English longbows, the early, early longbows, are all out of ammo now. 77 kills, 79 kills, and 72 kills. Not bad, but now they're going to have to get some kills in hand to hand and help and do their part in holding the river in hand to hand. On this side here, we have one of the first French elite units to be used. We have French knights, the shock infantry. French knights wearing 14th century armor, and they're up against this bloodied English unit. And that is just a big two-handed axe swing to the neck. Belling another English knight. This guy doing a little better with the parries, but then going down, possibly from an arrow. And this English knight unit, tired and bloodied, now getting a lot more bloody, and breaking to the French charge. These elite French Knights have already killed 36 of the uh, defenders. And it looks like they're going to push through, guys. This is very dangerous. Trebuchet not able to turn the tide like it did last time. And big kills here as, as these, this French knight unit flanks some early era knights from England. 
And that armor is not going to hold up to these weapons. You have archers trying to focus fire the branch, but they do have excellent armor. And here's their captain here, actually, in France. Forcing another knight back of England and killing him. Units have rallied and returned but to the now battle. we have a charge, and this is a second unit of English foot knights with high arrow armor, the 14th century armor, charging in. They're going to be tough, very tough to get through. So they have successfully filled in this gap, but this unit breaking as well of English foot knights up against the Shock Infantry of Lorraine, which are the men-at-arms, and they've broken through. So the English need to, need to fill this gap quickly. Big trebuchet shot, taking out a few of them. But these Billmen are going to try to do it. Now the Bills will do well, since they are set they can try to attack from the front and these men-at-arms are going to waver and break here. They may, they may yet rally, they do have a few men left. But it's going to be interesting what they try to hold this river with because these archers have a lot of arrows left and these billmen do not have shields despite their decent armor, they don't have any shields. And look at this river guys. Just completely blocked up by bodies. These guys are walking on bodies now. What a bunch of girls. Wow, I don't think anyone on this field. Oh, look at this. So this knight unit is broken. And that was actually not a knight unit, but a men at arm shock infantry unit, my mistake. And these billmen here, shaken already. 67 men left of 120. And we can, we, that is just from the arrow fire. And we see more of them going down from the arrows. So this is not, this unit is, it's not a good unit to keep here. They don't have shields and they're already wavering. They did so well too, they broke a knight unit. Over here we have some archers just being hurled in break another unit of archers. Again, these are all archers that are out of ammunition. And these English longbows with 133 kills, so they must have picked up some melee kills against other weak units. But now breaking. Our men flee the field of battle. This is a shameful display. And it looks like Zethro, who's controlling Wales, has moved up some of his dismounted Templar knights. So they're going to hold over here now. Once these archers are out of, well, once they die. And there's a lot of dead bodies on this side as well, guys. In this very shallow, shallow area of the river crossing. Trebuchet of England here, 170 kills. And Wales with the Bombard with 84 kills, that's very hard to do, especially considering he still has more than half of his ammunition. So very good work here by Zethro with his artillery. The other Bombard over here, almost out of ammunition, but 179 kills, so well done. And just an excellent position here to be firing at the flanks of a lot of these units. Almost out of ammunition, maybe he'll get to 200. That would be very impressive with the Bombard. I do wonder if the French uh, other artillery is done now, besides that Bombard. Well, here goes the charge. Some English foot knights charge again. And just knocking some of these French lighter armored knights to the ground, others just being cut down. Look at this guy, the cinematic view. A fresh English foot knight unit wearing the latest and greatest 14th century armor, taking on some lighter armored French knights, edge knights perhaps, and just wrecking them. 
these two-handed weapons. Being too much for this 13th the century armor to admit of the French. The unit has rallied. Big splashes here as, as both sides try to push through this river. And is that a flank? We have some crossbows and a overhead overhead shot by the English artillery taking out some of these bows. And yes, that is a flank. So the bows have flanked these English foot knights and have attacked them from the rear. England is quickly going to try to counter that by throwing in some more units. But the morale penalty may have been done already. Now the English bows were out of ammo are fighting these French bowmen in hand to hand. Crossbows as well, already 125 kills for the French crossbows. Now flanking some English foot knights. They won't do too well against them, but they may lower their morale. The knights are surrounded on three sides now. More English arrows flitting overhead here. Who's firing? We have just a longbowman here and a retinue longbowman here. 143 kills for this unit and 130. These guys, just super elite, great aim, the best bow and arrow technology here for this era. As the snow comes down, they are still picking off the targets. And Trebuchet with a big hit. Causing two units to waver. And over here we do have a standstill. This trebuchet has scored some kills in the meantime, 230 kills. But the Welsh happy to just hold the line here. And these English longbows who are out of ammo are just not really a great target, but France moving up some crossbows to see what they will try to shoot at. I feel like this side here with a lot more action right now. French foot knights pulling out. They don't want to be stuck against the pole arms. We will cut down these French sergeants. Whatever the left. And they do break. One cab uh, unit being taken out by a trebuchet shot here. And we have a treb trebuchet crew from England being thrown in there. Out of ammo or maybe their last trebuchet was killed. This trebuchet is down to one out of four as well. That must be the work of this bombard which is still firing away. Possibly into the river. And the knights thinking about charging in. Pulling out here, these are the Knights of Lorraine. We've already lost nine men due to missile fire. English trebuchet fire coming down. Missing a unit of the Knights of Lorraine and they're going to charge. No, they won't charge the pull arms. Smart move, they do pull back. This unit will charge, by the looks of it. Whoops. Where did we go? We were over here. And they did charge in, guys. We missed the charge, but they're going to damage this English Fortnite unit greatly. And another unit charging here. And these pole arms are not set. Great charge seeing. by Lorraine. Just devastating this pole arm unit. The heavy billmen. Now wavering. Wow. Great move by the Dutch Shield Lorraine here with not one but two fantastic cab charges. They pull over into another English Footnight unit and take that out as well. So Lorraine sweeping some elite units off the field, some Enemy high units, have been rallied. units off the field and getting out of the way from the uh, vengeful trebuchet shots here. 69 kills for this night unit and 78 for that night unit. Both still with plenty of men. 
great, great cavalry charges by the Duchy of Lorraine. And the French crossbow cavalry now will try to use some of its arrow fire now that the archers are running so low and a lot of them are out. So they're setting up over here and sending some darts in against the English defenders, as well as another unit firing from the side here. This, this side finally livening up a little bit as the French have thrown in some spears, they realize with 24 minutes left, they need to press the action. And some trebuchet and shots really taking out a lot of the this French as display. well as some of the English here. But these French units with all these experience points added just worth a little more gold than, well, maybe not these dismounted Templars. They are early era Templars, but they're still Templars. 447 kills for the trebuchet here though. Pretty good numbers. And another shot overhead here. And that just absolutely devastates this spear unit. A little bit of friendly fire too, but mostly French units here dying. And the trebuchet up to 474 kills. And that unit is broken now. English and the Welsh on this side here with zoom throws, dismounted early era Templars holding the river just in a perfect position here. But the French with more infantry, more money, and more, more forces here, sending in men through this very shallow river crossing. And now they've got their shields up. And it looks like Got my army moving up here with some billmen and spears ready in case these Templar Knights are not able to hold. And just so much infantry being pushed up here, these spears pushing in, trying to grind through these Templars. And a big mass of French spears here, guys, just pushing, pushing through the other side of the room. And we do have a unit that is seemingly flanked through. Yes, they do get through. And that unit is going to cause huge problems here, guys, as it's flanked past through this narrow little the enemy have rallied their units. gap in the defending. And a point blank cannon shot just scattering bodies here. Wow. English foot knights here being thrown in. Take up this unit of French spears, which is pushed very close to the to the artillery of both myself and Zetro. That was a great cannon shot here, point blank. That would have lowered their morale tremendously for that night charge. And the cannons firing away again. Not sure. We're over here, taking up some spears. Great hits here by the bomber. We Burn revealed their reserves. deception. Hidden troops. And now it looks like England's 14th century heavy poppy spears are setting up here in front of the billmen. So this is how you give your billmen shields. Make a shield wall in front of them. But the trebuchet with the shot overhead, and it's going for this mass. And a direct hit here against this mass of French troops killing many, many men here in this river just burning the bodies before they basically crumple to the heap here. And that was tremendous. And that trebuchet here is 543 kills with that shot.
Now this unit in Testudo certainly blocking these fulfillment, but just not all of them. And another big volley from the trebuchet incinerates more of the French troops. And the Spears will take the brunt of the charge and the Bills will just be poking around them here. Just the lighter unit. And we see them going down. Oh yeah, lots of them. Pushback of being gutted here by the Billmen and by the English Spears, which are wearing heavier 14th century armor. So these two units easily holding against what's left of this mass here. But we can see that the French have pushed them right to the edge of the river. They're now off the solid ground here. And more cannon fire here from this bombard. That one was a miss, but it's got a lot of kills here, 142 kills, which is tremendous for a Bombard. This one over here with 195, but it's completely out of ammunition. The crew is being thrown into hand-to-hand. -hand. And look at this push here, guys. We have some French cavalry pushing through, and this side is falling to the French. Enemy units now, I, I've actually sent some cavalry here, some English knights. Try to make sure that nothing sneaks through here. They are throwing in their oh, reserves. They are place. throwing in everything. Alex. And a big trebuchet shot overhead does hit here. Big hit on the French. The French are pulling their cavalry back. They did not want to try to press through against this blockade here. The King's Guard and a unit of knights with lighter armor were facing them here. And the English have plugged this gap for now. The French are throwing in some elite knights here. Back over here, not much going on. We have just these units being thrown in again as soon as they rally. They won't get far against this elite spear and filament combination here. Already wavering and some units breaking here. A massive push on this side here by France with 16 minutes and 40 seconds left. They're going to try to push through here and oh goodness, a gigantic trebuchet shot. Not sure if that is uh, Fenrir possibly with the Kingdom of England. And if not, then it, it has to be gluten free water the other player over here with England, but tremendous trebuchet shot. It's trebuchet with 284 kills with only a single trebuchet. It's the only one that's left. Uh, the Bombard got through with it. The Duke's Guard of Lorraine here, still hiding, hidden in the, in the forest here. Behind the French general, and here we do see this crossbow unit firing away. Already 44 kills and plenty of ammo left. French throwing in their bombard crew. On this side, we just have on top of this massive pile of bodies, we have the French dismounted knights who are wavering against the billmen. But plenty of men going down on both sides. The billmen almost Almost done, they're shaken. We got 40 men left, but the French to break first. So a fresh unit of 120 dismounted French knights is now ready to go across. And here they go, here's their charge. And they crash into the center of their spear, they just go right through them, and it's the bills. And they're gonna cut some of these buildings down. The men are broken and running for their lives. Oh, look at that. It's a tremendous charge. And those billmen look to be done. Now some of them engaging with the next line of billmen. These are the Welsh billmen. But no, they're going to be pulled back on purpose after clearing out these units. And they will charge. That is a surprise to me. It's charging billmen up front even with shock is a dangerous proposition. 
their Olaf just have exceptional range. Enemy units have returned to the battle! And let's enjoy cinematic, you guys. As the knights try to cut through the English bills. And the spear is being pushed up here. Looks like this trebuchet is already up to a 600 kills. Still a little bit of ammo left. But a charge here as these knights were trying to push through rather the ends of the French. And this early knight unit almost decimated. Only 30 men left after all of this. So really nothing left to hold this side here. The trebuchet firing away and slamming into this cavalry, crossbow cavalry unit. But this side has fallen. There is just not enough infantry to hold here and the French know it. And Lorraine sending in some of those knights which had some excellent charges earlier. Trying to target the King of England. Trying to end this now and here they go, they do charge. And they catch the King's guard here. The king trying to pull away. They're charging through and that king's bodyguard's lost five men already, but these English knights are going to charge. And they've, they've changed targets here and they've taken all the artillery crew. A little messy charge here, but they managed to catch these knights of Lorraine who slew a few of the King's Guard and then took out the re remaining trebuchet for England. So bad news for England. Good news is that the King made it out and he's charged back in against a very wounded Pole Arm unit, which is now broken. And these archers fighting alongside a unit of very depleted hospitalers, which actually Zetho, the Welsh commander, is sent over and these pikes just claiming this side for the French. England with nothing left here in terms of infantry. These knights here just trying to be a threat, trying to prevent the crossing here. King of England circling here, he's down to 27 men out of 38. Edward the Black Prince has come over here. The Welsh general thinking about heading over as well, but deciding against it. Meanwhile, over here, we do have a gigantic crawl. And uh, another overhead oh, shot. Used all its ammunition. And slamming into the French ranks here, right over the heads of these brave English foot knights. And one unit breaking, many men burning here. Excellent. Excellent trebuchet shot, and that trebuchet is out of ammo. But 694 kills for the trebuchet guys. They've earned a silver chevron experience uh, point, which will make them fight that much harder and have to end. Maybe get the 700 kills. That would be, that would be great in terms of crossing the battle. These English knights hammering away at the spears. But that unit depleted and tired. And now French knights reinforcing those depleted spears. Meanwhile, over here, we have the French forcing their way into the river here. And a big charge Our by the Bois de France into lives. the remaining units here. But a, a trebuchet shot against the Bois de France kills only two of his men, kills a lot of Englishmen here. And that trebuchet crew, 16 of them left after the charge by those Knights of Lorraine. Crossbows are picking out some bows here and they will break them. English Knights of the 14th, with the 14th century armor here, considering a charge, backing the King of France off, and then pulling back out. And it looks like my 14th century 
uh, English mounted knight here as well. The field of the balance of power are very this close, guys. Display. The French started off with 8,500 units, the English had 7,500. Now, 1,800 of the French left against just under 1,400 of the English. And here we do have a charge. English knights wearing lighter 13th century armor. Ramming into French infantry. Actually, that is the infantry of Lorraine, possibly. And that was a big cap charge here. But those foot knights are going to survive it. The French crossbows flanking. We have the King of England moving in, but then wisely pulling out. We have this unit kind of just stuck in melee and the trebuchet again has been attacked and this time they won't survive that. The English the knights are being pulled out here and actually it looks like the generals are wisely pulling away to the other side of the river here. We have the king's bodyguard, 22 men, an English knight unit and Edward the Black Prince who is still has all 38 of his retinue, nine kills, pulling away as well. The French have won through here, but at what cost? Just a massive slaughter on a massive scale here. But the French do break through with Lorraine here. Knox, and I'm not sure if that's Sylvain Yara or one of the other French players, they do break through. Over here we have one of the last English Fortnite units ready to help out these billmen of Wales cannot stop the swarm of French infantry. These are French sergeants here guys with 14th century armor pushing in against the billmen. They're not going to do well but they're, they're going to like one on one but they will overwhelm them. And already happening. The billmen wavering. So the English Fortnite's charge will be muffled by the billmen because you got to get through them. But they will extend this, this French tide for now. And the French just no fear of clumping up now because that trebuchet is out of all out of ammunition. And here we are, guys. The end game, seven minutes left. Can the French do it? They've pushed through and they're trying to encircle this English force. Our general is under attack. 60. 70 kills for this unit now and it looks like the French trying to push through possibly or no they're just they're just moving in and clumping up on this unit here the remaining 25 Welsh billmen are trying to get back in there as the English king over here trying to raise the morale and here's a charge nope the Hobblars very fast unit here pulling out They're just trying to disrupt here, disrupt the French. So this is kind of a makeshift defense. We have one night unit fully healthy holding all of these French infantry. From this side, the French have now come around here. We have the Wa de France here in the back, 38 out of 38. We have the Duke's guard there somewhere as well. So they've circled around and are trying to be the hammer on this anvil here of French infantry not going anywhere because even if all these swords break you have a fully healthy spirit in here with max experience points and 14th century armor but the, the enemy refuses king's to bodyguard defeat. They do a little rally. side charge here trying to clean out all these men that would be great if the if the english could focus here the defenders could focus here and one of the French generals is charging here. And a big charge on the Welsh general, and he does catch him, but he takes some arrow fire here. So an interesting turn of events. Looks like at least 10 of the Welsh Kingsguard is down, but all these arrows, because the, the French generals moved in, nine of his men are down too. He moves away before the English foot knights can get a hold of him. But so many of these retinue longbowmen, the they, they pick him up. They kill one of the French generals. 
does take a few hobblers with him, with the rest of the unit on the charge. But one of the French generals down, guys. Four and a half minutes left, and the French encircling the English with their crossbow cavalry here. The hobblers in loose formation, they're going to get caught against this Fortnite unit from Lorraine, and they will kill more hobblers. The Duke's Guard here, full 120 units, max experience points. The English Foot Guard here, the Foot Knights, with the captain of my army here, also with 120 units, and a good number of experience points, but not quite as experienced. And a second unit like that over here. We have a unit of the ret of the retinue long woman out of ammo moving in here to help in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Two light Welsh bow units firing away and a retinue long unit firing away. And we have the King of England who's flanked and going on a rear charge, hammer on anvil against French spears. And just knocking them to the ground, guys. There's the King of England, and he slays another. With his sword. And he is drenched in blood now. Hacking and slashing here with his King's Guard. Some of the Warhammers. Wow. And they break that last French unit. And he's going to ride them down every last one. He only has 13 men left after that engagement. And speaking of engagements, here we go. Men at arms, Lorraine against the general of my army, the English Foot Knights. And here is the captain, and he slashes one. But that man keeps his, keeps his footing, he's still slashing away. Now some calves swirling around here. We have English knights trying to catch the French crossbows, but they're gonna pull back here as the crossbows are shelling them from the side. Two minutes and Enemy 10 units seconds have left. To the battle. And we have one unit of men at arms that is flanked through, and they're gonna just smash through these light Welsh archers. Is that the King of England again? Big charge knocking down some of the men at arms Lorraine. Our allies have lost their general. But they he is now down. The King of England. But he took out a few, and this unit now shaking because it is surrounded. And the rest of this King's Guard is going to try to charge again. And they will. They will knock down even more. And to help break this unit while wow, the King of England sacrificing himself here, guys. This English Foot Knight unit fighting and breaking a small detachment of the men at arms and now trying to flank. The knights have been the archers have been charged by crossbow calf. And the retinue longbows won't do well against that. But a minute left in this battle, guys, and a bit of a flank here by the English Foot Knights against the men-at-arms, the Duke's Guard now involved as well. And just a massive, massive brawl here. Forty seconds left, and the Water Fonts charged by some English knights, and he is shaken. And another charge here. Edward the Black Prince bowling over some French crossbows and that might be it guys the French morale is done if their king doesn't rally it will be over and there's only 15 seconds left on the timer guys the king bodyguards still alive advantage. seven seconds left four three with three seconds left guys at the buzzer England pulling off the Pyrrhic victory Wow, I hope you guys enjoyed that as much as I did. That was one heck of a battle here, guys. Fought in the snow. Let's take a look at the stats, if we have any available. 
Just a tremendous battle, guys, and so much fun. Props to all the players, guys. Um, four on four battles, not they don't happen too often in uh, a Total War, um, the uh, Medieval Kingdoms 12, 12 AD mod. But when we do get them, sometimes they are just tremendous. So England with the victory, they are now going to invade and lead the counterattack against the French. But before we get to that, let's talk about the stats here. The English foot guard, the general here for my army with 141 kills. Uh, this other English foot knight unit with 120. This unit with 313 but being wiped out. Um, this unit with 170 being wiped out. The spears here really just there to sh soak up um, some, some arrows into their shields. Some of them with a few kills but mostly doing pretty poorly in a higher of battle here. My higher spear is also doing pretty poorly, getting wiped out, 59 kills. The Billman doing a little better with 136. The archers did pretty well, I would say, uh, for, for my, my army here. 136, 113, 95, and 57, and then 117 here for this Red New Longbow. So certainly seen better numbers probably in this game as well, but not too bad. Um, the English Knights could have done better here, 54 kills. Um, notably, though, this unit's still alive at the end of the battle. This unit with 77 kills completely wiped out. The trebuchet definitely helping turn the tide here with 695 kills. Now gluten-free water, second England player here. Edward the Black Prince, 42 kills, and I'm not sure he lost a man. He did very well, um, but also more just commanding from the back, keeping the general safe, and then using him as a last resort. Uh, his English foot knights, 117, very good numbers. Uh, but then down to 61 and only 33 for this unit. So you do want more than that out of the unit. Now it depends who they were facing. If they were facing the French foot knights with all those added experience points, um, it's it's certainly understandable. His spears as well, nine kills. But this unit with the early era spears to get 52 kills is pretty good uh, value. So good job there. Um, the high era spears, 45 kills, could have done better. The Billman, 25 kills, could have done better. His archers with very good numbers here. Especially considering these were tier 1 archers or the early era archers. 144, 139, 129, 98, and 127. So just tremendous numbers for early era archer units. Um, his cavalry, 54 kills, 63 kills, and 32 kills. Notably, this unit is still alive at the end of the battle. And his trebuchet with 142 kills. So gluten-free water overall, pretty good game. Let's move on to Z-Throw. Now, he did bring the Welsh here, and his Bombard with 150 kills, I want to start with that, because I think he was the only one to bring a Bombard on the defending team. And those are good numbers. The Bombard doesn't really do much splash damage. It's just whatever the cannonball hits. So, with 150 kills, um, that is uh, some good, good accuracy here. Uh, the Welsh general here, seven kills, mostly staying out of harm's way. He was charged by a French general and lost maybe a third of his unit, but the general himself survived. So sort of keeping him out of harm's way and using him when he had to. Um, 29 kills here, 17, up to 52 again. So pretty good numbers for Welsh spears and 50. And his billmen with a lot of a lot of value here. 73 kills and 123 kills for some stock billmen. Uh, his infantry, these are the early era... Sword Infantry of Wales, 18 kills, 19 kills, so not too good. His early era, Dismounted Hospitallers, 14, 26, and 81. This unit worth um, you know worth the money for sure. The Templars doing a little worse here, 34, 24, and 38. Now, where he makes up for it is with his archers. So the early era Welsh archers with 56 kills, 40, and then 259 kills for an early era unit. Just tremendous numbers. And a second unit with over 200 kills. So very good numbers on the archers. I think that's what really pulled the throw through and was one of the big reasons why him and I managed to hold our side of the river. And then that Bombard, as I mentioned, the, the accuracy to score 150 kills um, is, is very good. So, so that um, overall, um, you know, despite some of the infantry underperforming, the archers and the Bombard, and his billmen pulling through. Uh, Fenrir over here with England. Um, he he was the one that had the king's bodyguard. The king of England did die in this battle. Um, but 157 kills uh, for him before he went down. So just a tremendous performance by the king of England. 
Uh, 130 kills for the English Fortnite unit, 147 for this Fortnite unit. All these units wiped out completely. His Bellman with a little worse performance is also wiped out. Uh, his Fortnite's also not too great. I see a unit with 73, which is good. Um, but then I have a unit at zero here, 21 here, and 20 here. So some very poor numbers. Um, his Archer's also doing very well here. 75 for this early unit. And then the higher retinue longbowmen, you do want them to, to get a few more kills because they are worth more money. They have better arrows and they have just um, better uh, range and better aim. 148 kills here, 263 kills here, 164 and 170. Very good numbers there. Definitely, definitely um, shifting the time of the battle with those type of numbers for Fenrir. And then 351 uh, trebuchet kills. That is always a good number. Uh, so Fenrir helping the English hold the river. On the other side, we have Knox. Now the Duke's foot guard, it seemed like they kind of just broke at the end of the battle. They did manage 18 kills before they do that. Um, his other shock infantry, and I do see he brought one too many. Uh, 13, 38, 8, and 48, not great numbers there. Uh, his infantry also not, not great numbers. These Moselle Merchant Marines with a good 80 kills. Um, these early foot knights here with 79 kills, so some decent numbers. Oh, and I see a unit 117 there, very good. Um, but countered with some weaker scores here so kind of blowing hot and cold uh, as 14th century foot knights um very poor numbers nine and six this unit may have had a few survivors and his archers here 70 kills pretty good 42 and then 32 um again blowing a bit hot and cold but his his knights with very good numbers here 135 kills 103 kills so both of those units in the triple digits uh, meaning Knox had some very good, and I do remember some very good cavalry charges with these kills being really quanti uh, quality kills as well as getting the quantity um, to good numbers. He did wipe out some good 14th century armored units with those knights. Uh, Kariah Wolfie, his general with 18 kills. Um, his other two cav, 92 and 34. These are not the heaviest cav that France has, so decent numbers. Um, and then his sergeant is 27. You want a little more out of them considering all those experience points. Um, his sergeant Darms with 50 kills before being wiped out. Not great numbers here. Let's see. He has sergeants, 22 kills, 15, and 25 kills, 20 kills. So overall, pretty underwhelming numbers there. Um, the crossbows with 27 kills. It looks like some of them may have been alive at the end of the battle. These were bands in 29, 38, 32, 1, 17, and 12. Not great numbers here. And then the spears, 23, 59, 23, and 85. A little better considering these are early era spears. So overall, Kariah Wolfie, um, he did not bring any artillery. So he had a very, very uphill battle for most of the game. I did like what he did with his uh, cavalry units and some of his spear units. Um, strong wind over here with 32 kills. And his general, the Wadda Fons, I believe survived the battle. He may have broken, um, as we saw at the very end there, um, but survived the battle. And we will see him in the Siege of Paris. Um, 80 kills for this dismounted knight unit, 93, and then 223. Tremendous numbers, uh, all things considered, and a losing cause for these dismounted knights. 27 kills for this early spear unit, 109 kills for the pikes with a couple of them left over 146 for the billmen so strong with some very good use of pikes and pole arms his knights with decent numbers these are the early knights 49 53 43 sergeants with 47 and then we have his archers 37 a little weaker 55 and then up to 105 so pretty good numbers and the crossbows in triple digits as well so his missiles overall doing very well 127 138 here and he does have some crossbows left over uh, at the end of the battle here 68 for this crossbow cav unit i think he went missile heavy he didn't take any shot cav and maybe that cost him at the end but it was an interesting strategy and maybe this is why strong wind was able to win his side of the river crossing and and cross the river at least on one side uh, before ultimately um, losing 68 13 and 64 so decent numbers some of these getting off the field, but very wounded. And his bombard with 203 kills, so even more than Zethro. Uh, very impressive numbers for a bombard. And finally, we have Sylvian Yarrow here 
Uh, his general dying, but 32 kills. Um, at least I think he died. I'm not 100% sure. Um, the Dismounted French Knight, 79, 71, and then 112 over here. So pretty good numbers for his shock infantry. Um, his cavalry, or uh, spears, excuse me, spear infantry, 12, 32, 21, 34. And then he has all of these dismounted French foot knights wearing the earlier 13th century armor. 17, 64, 53, 38, 46, 34, 73. Kind of hot and cold there. Um, definitely his archers were, were tremendous. Uh, with 154 kills here, 113, 156, 146, and 101. You know that if you bring five missiles and all of them are in triple digits, uh, you did really well for your missile units. So Sylvain Yara, one of the stronger players in this game, uh, with a very good performance. Perhaps if he had some artillery or some cavalry, could have done a little more um, and maybe turned the tide. But an excellent game from him and just a pleasure of a game to commentate, guys. We will have the next phase of this campaign series, we can call it, or um, uh, scenario rather, it would be a better term, scenario series up next. Since the English did hold the river, they will now lead the counterattack and besiege Paris. So join us for that video coming up soon.